This theme park was home to the world's longest roller coaster, opening in 1991 and built by British Rail. In this video, we're going to take a look at why British Rail became involved with this roller coaster and also what happened to it. Let's start with the conception of the ride. The ultimate roller coaster was the brainchild of one Robert Staveley, the owner of Lightwater Valley Country Park, as it was known back then, a former fruit picking farm that had now grown into a family day out. It was Yorkshire's newest tourist attraction and with rising visitor numbers, they had to invest in something big. Lightwater Valley only covered half of the land that the Staveley family actually owned, with a large section of land west of the park and begging for expansion. He came up with the idea of building a cable car to take passengers up this mile long stretch of land. Only he didn't think this would draw in enough people. Then came his final idea. He would build a roller coaster that would utilize the valley's terrain, offer magnificent views of the surrounding area and start within the main park itself. This is where the ultimate roller coaster was born. Originally budgeted to cost 1.2 million pounds and designed by himself, he needed professional help to actually get it off the ground. All the big roller coaster manufacturers came in much too expensive. So he brought in a Midlands based company called Big Country Motioneering, who had some previous experience with smaller theme park rides at Camelot and the American Adventure. However, they had never attempted anything on this scale before. He originally envisaged the ride to be made completely out of wood to fit with the landscape. But due to noise issues and maintenance prices, he decided to only build the two lifts from wood and the track from quieter and longer lasting steel. And so he employed a small and relatively new company called Tubular Eggington from Tyneside to supply the steel track. The company had previously manufactured metal barriers for the London Marathon. Professional designs were drawn up by Big Country Motioneering and contracts were signed for the 12 month construction phase in 1989. The ride would have two wooden lift hills made of Canadian red wood. The first one at 102 feet high and the second at 107 feet with a 125 foot drop into a natural deep valley in Juniper Wood. The ride would have to travel at a speed of 50 miles per hour to traverse the full length of the course at over 1.5 miles or 7,442 feet of track and make it back to the station. So where does British Rail fit into all this? Bear with me, I'm getting to that. During the planning process, the costs were already spiralling, mistakes were being made and the delays were mounting up. Robert blamed Big Country Motioneering for the delays, who was supposed to design and construct the ride. He promptly fired them from the project, even though they had already started the construction. He then needed someone else that would have experience in engineering a ride of this scale and that would be able to build the roller coaster trains and finish the project. Who could possibly have experience in building what was practically a vertical railway and the expertise to engineer some trains? Well, British Rail of course. See, it wasn't clickbait. So this is where British Rail stepped in, providing an engineering team to come up with the train designs and wheel assemblies and to tie the project together with a few alterations to the track layout. Along with the park's own in-house team, the project was back on track, pardon the pun. The Ultima opened in the summer of 1991, but it was due to open in 1990. But as we know, anything that British Rail touches is always late. No excuse of leaves on the line this time. Opening over a year late, and after 18 months of construction, the delays were down to the many changes that were required to pull off a project of this scale. And in essence, British Rail had saved the whole project. Once the ride was completed, the owner, Robert Staveley, was the first person to test the ride, restraining himself into the train with a rope tied around him. The first test ride was completed. However, the trains didn't always make it back to the station. A rail replacement bus had to be provided. All right, that didn't happen. There were many things on the completed ride that needed to be changed. 
from severe track banking that caused the ride to be unbearable to a section of the track that was removed altogether called the Wiggle. The wheels were once again redesigned by British Rail and consequently enlarged to reduce stresses on the riders and the train itself. There are some notable things on the ride where you can clearly tell it had inspiration from British Rail engineers. Other than the fact it has track and trains, it also features very unique coaster track foundations. If we look at the usual roller coaster foundations, concrete piles buried into the ground with the track supports bolted to the concrete footers. However, on the Ultimate, it has railway sleepers. Yes, you heard that right. If we look closer at this image, you can see the steel track supports are bolted to railway sleepers. In fact, if you look at this picture, you can see they are not only railway sleepers, but old railway sleepers. You can still see the bolt holes for the chairs, and also sat on a bed of railway ballast for its entire route around the park. So how close to a railway can a roller coaster get? This not only reduced costs, but meant that it could easily be laid. The downside to this is gradual movement across the years, bending the steel track and causing the roughness that the ride was known for in its later years. The ride features a double tunnel ending, where the roller coaster traverses a figure eight layout through a tunnel. But again, if you look at the tunnel construction, you can see the old British rail influence here. Brick lined portals that resemble many railway tunnels around the network. Only the inside of the tunnels were made of wood and steel. The trains themselves share a lot of similarities with railway rolling stock, from slightly modified wheel bogey and chassis assemblies, using a lot of railway engineering in their design, to the actual steam train funnel on the front of the car. No pacer trains were harmed in the making of this roller coaster, and I would argue that they were much more brutal than this ride ever was. One design flaw that British Rail had to remove quickly after opening was that the trains were designed with overhead restraints. It provided a very uncomfortable ride, with people coming off with nosebleeds. It restricted head movement on what was a very brutal at times white knuckle ride. Tell. All I can tell you is I'm in agony after going round once sitting at the front. I've twisted my neck. Even Frank Bruno himself, who opened the ride, wouldn't ride for a second time and compared it to the blows taken in a round of boxing. The restraints were replaced after a few weeks of operation with a more comfortable but equally secure lap restraint. This resulted in the old train shells being dumped in a back storage area for many years after they were completely remoulded. But despite the minor setbacks and the delays to construction, the ride proved to be very popular and it was a miracle that they managed to pull this off. British Rail had saved the ride and managed to build a railway that didn't have a fat controller in sight. When the ride was completed, the costs had spiralled to £5.2 million from the original £1.2 million estimate, plunging the Staveley family into massive debt for the foreseeable future, but accidentally creating what was at the time the world's longest roller coaster. It lost its title of world's longest after nine years in the year 2000 when Steel Dragon opened in Japan, but held the record for Europe's longest throughout its entire life. A few accidents occurred on the ride in the years after opening, but none of them serious. However, the axle and wheel assembly design did cause a problem in 1995, when stresses on one of the 38 passenger trains caused an axle to break and a set of wheels to be flung from the ride. Again, not causing any injuries to the riders, but meaning that the axle and bogey designs had to be redone and replaced on each of the two trains, with the third train having gone AWOL at this point, never to be seen again. Well, here we are on the boundaries of Lightwater Valley, and we're at the back of the ultimate roller coaster. And would you believe it, just behind them trees there is the second lift hill, which is over 100 feet tall. Now, for such a big roller coaster, it was very well hidden and you couldn't see it from very many places around the park. The ride running continuously, season after season, for almost 30 years, without any major modifications, is a testament to the engineers involved. Only silly problems, like a local farmer complaining 
that his cows would no longer produce milk due to the ride overshadowing his farm. And a screening fence had to be erected on the ride's second lift hill to prevent this. As a child, I remember seeing this ride being constructed and then having my first ride on it in 1991 at the age of eight. Clearly terrified as you can see in the picture, but loving its uniqueness and a stunning setting for this mammoth roller coaster. Riding it many hundreds of times throughout its operating life and for the last time in 2019. So what happened to the ultimate? Well, after closing for the season in 2019, it would remain closed for three years due to the global you-know-what. But during that period, the park had changed its business model to focus on young children and also found new owners in the Brighton Pier Group. Then unexpectedly, in January 2023, it was announced that the ride would not be reopening. Changing the park's audience and the cost of repairs to bring it up to modern standards were claimed by the owners, and also stating that it was to be demolished and removed from the park for good, rendering the ultimate to be no more. As of making this video, the ride is still standing, as you can see from my drone footage, and looks as good as the day it last operated. Yes, it would need some minor cleanup work to get it back open, some bushes trimmed, a few bolts fixing back in place, and maybe it was due some major track work. But for how long will it remain standing? Nobody knows. I will hopefully cover this on the channel if anything does happen with the ride, so keep your eyes peeled for that. It appears that this vertical railway, built by British Rail, would also be facing the axe. Only this time, we can't blame a certain Dr. Beeching. Well, thank you very much for joining us here at Lightwater Valley in North Yorkshire. And a fond farewell to my favourite roller coaster. I'll see you next week in the next video. Bye for now.